This has been an incredible run. I know we're disappointed about today, but man, I'm just telling you, I love what we got. I love what we've done this year. Cannot tell you guys how much I love you for the effort that was put forth this year and the strides that we made as a team, the strides that we made as a team. You know, we talked about climbing the mountain and all that stuff a million times, right? It's hard to get to Everest the very first time you go to climb it, okay? But I know this, I have learned this, I have learned this that even though we didn't get the whole way to the top this year, we got pretty far up that mountain. And you know what? That makes us learn for the next time, right? We'll make it the whole way up there the next time up. And now we know the path to get there. We know what it takes. We know what it takes amongst ourselves. And we got the guys to do that right here, to get to the top. Ain't nobody take nothing from us for what we did this year. I appreciate y'all. I love every one of y'all. We know this ain't gonna be the same next year. That's how it is. But we, gonna, we got a team, boy. Let's go, bro. Bring it up. Oh man, I love y'all boys. Family on three. One, two, three, family! family. ultimate goal every year is to win the Super Bowl. I mean, that's, that's what we want to do. Do we know that's a hard goal to reach every year? Absolutely it is. The disappointment of the loss and also seeing the resiliency when they came in the building the next few days and there's a bunch of guys here now working when they, they don't need to be. We still have work to do, but it does tell us that we've got the locker room going in the right direction. We have a bunch of guys that hold each other accountable, that do care about winning. Winning means something to them. Their performance means something to them, and their teammates mean something to them. That's a positive thing for us going forward. We've got a little discrepancy on this guy. All right. When we step in this draft room, titles go out the door, including mine. One of the biggest things, tell me what you think. Tell me what you really think. I didn't hire to tell you what to do. I hired you to tell me what you think and your expertise in the work you've done. He makes tackles in space, he's got ball skills, he's best when he's close to the line of scrimmage. I like the football make with this kid. He's kind of a in a good way. He's a captain, four-year starter. He's got a chip on his shoulder, good worker. He's just not loud, he's not vocal, he's just a... He's more of a soldier than a, than a leader, he works hard. When you have a group in here, and it doesn't matter if you're an intern or if you're the, the assistant GM, we challenge each other's thinking, and they all know that. And that can be a hard thing to get criticized on a guy you've been scouting on for two years, and then everybody starts poking holes in that player. But at the end of the day, we're trying to get it right for the Colts. He is a survivor, came out of a really bad situation. Grew up rough, mom wasn't capable. Uh, this guy's really charming. One source said he'll be a dynamite salesman. I think he's got real deal leadership potential. You think he lacks, he's going to make up for with, you know, just persistence, hard work. He loves football and he's a dog, but that sometimes will get him in a little bit of trouble. He's going to attempt cut tackles, but there's times where he looks soft. He'll backpedal out of some contact. It's been too soft overall this year. He is highly intelligent, though, in terms of being a football player. The strength and the tackling were the concern for me. You want to draft this guy? All kinds of time for Brady to go for it. To the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown! I mean, we're all tired. We've all been out a bunch going on, but I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. Get a copy of our depth chart and start thinking. we got some major decisions. Some of these needs may be addressed in free agency. They may not. we got to outwork people. That's how we're going to get better, okay? Just outworking people. You see this process. You see how it works. We ain't done shit yet. A wild card game.
we're here to see the top more than 100 players in the country. Get a chance to analyze them both on and off the field with interviews and then the on the field work. Here we go. That's an issue. He's gonna be right, right around like four or five oh. A little different when you have to get under center. The opportunity to sit down with them is vital for us. It's probably at the forefront of what we're here to do. Any questions before we get started? So this marks the first time we get to sit down and talk to the player and figure out who are you. There's a lot of things where you've enjoyed success in life. Why did football kind of, what did it provide you that maybe other things did? We like to tell the players before we start, look, just tell us who you are, tell your story. We're not as concerned with the highlight reel. Where you're at now to being established on NFL roster, what's gonna be the most difficult part of that transition for you? Leadership, were you ever, were you ever um, a captain? It's Groundhog's Day, every day is kind of the same. But you do realize, and, and, and having been through the draft that we had last year, with how many guys we hit on, you can see the value of just being tireless and just continuing to go until you know what you need to know. When you spend time with them, you feel it, you see it. You know who's, you know who's BSing us when we're interviewing them, who's been, who's been coached up. If they've had any sort of troubles or issues, they can help kind of clear that up for us and, and give us an explanation, you know, what has happened and how they're going to handle it moving forward. It's not going to be cookies and ice cream when you get to the league. There's no more scholarships and you're competing with somebody for the job. So will you be able to take a person's job and keep it? And then just as a citizen and being part of the organization, can we trust you away from the building? He has a great mindset. Yeah, he's the question. My only question when you get guys like that is he talented enough? Oh, no, he's talented. I mean, we'll, we'll, I, I talk, I, we'll watch it on time. I don't think I don't think he's gonna beat himself. No. No, that's no. good. So he's 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 solid. You gotta have gritty, tough, just love ball. You know who you want. You kind of know your target guys of of who you really want on the team. Which really, in actuality, it's not that many guys that you know you're just salivating to get on the team. After size and athleticism, I mean, it's effort and violence. Everything we need to know about toughness, competitiveness, I mean, we're, we should see that on tape. If it doesn't ooze off the tape, then we don't really want the guy. The people the Colts want to bring in, the people we want to put out in the community and find all that out. There could be guys that we like better as players, but at the end of the day, this guy's got a, he hits, he checks all the boxes and he ends up being a little higher on the board. They don't fit the profile, we're not drafting them. And everybody's been coming here for so long, it almost feels like everybody's second home. Yes, so we're very collaborative. From pro scouting to college scouting, it all meshes. It starts with the 40s. 6'3". 6'0". This guy went quick last time. Then they move into the positional drills. You obviously want to see how the guys compete, how they move. Um, you know, it's really our our third look through a lot of these guys. You know, we, do, we see them in the fall, in the college visits, and we get them at the All-Star Games. This is kind of the next step. It's just a chance to get to know these guys, you know, at a different level than, than you did during the year. Um, it's really the first time you have full access to them. You know, in the fall, you, you try to talk to them as much as you can, but, but now they're, they're ready to become pros and you can really sink your hands into them. And, you know, drafting the players really, it's really more about who they are than what they are. We have a very strict set of guidelines that we follow just from a height, weight, and speed standard. I mean, he is locked in. We have certain things we do with the numbers, the medical, the psych, all that stuff, the character, everything comes into play. It's just a scramble to get to know these guys as, as intimately as we can. They're long days, they're long days. All right, one second. 
just want to first time we've got a chance we don't get many chances like this to all get together you know hopefully next time it is it's in Miami at the Super Bowl when we have a chance to, to celebrate together but just know this we're just starting this is the start of the process going forward appreciate every one of you what you do you all impact winning every one of you impact winning uh, it's never about I've said it since day one it's never about one person so your job is critical for what we do uh, going forward, and it is much appreciated. The work you did last year um, was was great, but you know you got to do it again. We got to do it again. Medical scouting, strength coaching, all of us, we got to do it again. What we all thrive on is we love the chase. I mean that we we love the process. You know we love the ability to challenge and influence each other. That that's what we thrive on. And that's what we'll continue to thrive on, each and every one of us. We'll continue to thrive on getting better each and every day to make something and to create something that is really special. That, that's the goal, to create something that other people haven't done and that's something that's really special. And that is freaking hard. We all know it. But, damn, we're going to do it. We're going to do it because we got a special group of people in this room um, that care about one another but are not scared to challenge each other to get better each and every day. Okay? Raise your glasses to kicking everybody's ass. <laughs>information on all the players whether it's qualitative or quantitative that just helps us stack guys and rank them against each other the numbers are important to us we have some things that we look at and bottom lines that they have to hit just over the course of history tells you that they need to hit and if they don't hit them we're gonna ask some serious questions about does this player really fit and can he overcome it talk about outliers and what offsets so say somebody like Kenny Moore for instance who's a little bit shorter but his wingspan and his length is unusual for his size so that's what offsets Kenny's lack of traditional height that you want for the position. Player evaluation comes down to grading the tape and I think our scouts do an amazing job of that. We'll watch several games on, on each one of the players we'll watch interviews We'll watch the combine workouts, we'll watch pro day workouts, and you can always tell the level of athleticism, play speed, and competitive nature more than anything else that stands out on these players. That initially got on the board in February, by the time it's over with, we'll see them four times. High weight speed, he's gonna run fast, he's got size, but he's got short arms, he misses tackles. So like I'm watching summer tape on this guy, I'm like, Man, this guy must be pretty smart because he plays like inside backer like this, then he plays on the edge. He has some really impressive 50-50 balls and then he'll just drop too many routine balls. I like his hands. He's not very big, but he is competitive and tough as a blocker. Now you go out to practice, I mean, he looks like a high school kid. But he's the toughest player of the team, so he's dumb tough. It's the last 17 days, I think we went over around 1,800 players. Before the year started, we're at 13,000. Then we're at 2,500 throughout the fall. They come in in February, we're down to 250. Then throughout March and April, we whittle that down to probably 170. I'd say some teams have as many as 400, 500 guys on their draft board, which is, is too many. Ideally, you have less than that. People, it's kind of like, well, 256 get drafted. And I'm like, yeah, 256 get drafted, but there's 170 that we would say fit us. Just going through the board can mean totally different meaning on that day, depending on if we're talking about the position or if we're talking about the board in general.
Going through the board vertically is how we stack it, according to the top ranked player in that position, all the way down to the last guy who we have rated as a draftable player. Going through the board horizontally, it's how we compare them within their round or within their level by each position across, who we have them compared to. So say it could be an offense alignment compared to a defense alignment. Do we see them at that same level? You want to get it down, like you don't want to be cluttered on draft day, so that way your decisions are easy. It peels off nice, like when you're looking at the board, there's always like one guy sticking up above everyone else, and it, it's easy. It's like, well, who do we take? Well, you take that one, because he's up here and everybody else is right here. It's comparable to what happens on game day with coaching decisions. Every possible situation is repped beforehand so that when that situation arises, we know what we're going to do already because it's been discussed. We've worked through every scenario that says, all right, this guy's here, this is who we're taking. And then we're fielding calls all the way up until the pick. We're not just going to make a move to make a move. We're going to make the best decision we can uh, for us going forward. And if that means moving back in the draft and we think there's depth and we can collect more picks, then we'll do it. And if there's a guy we target that we think we need to move up for, we'll be aggressive and we do it. The Jets are moving up in this year's draft, trading their first round pick, the sixth overall selection to the Colts for their third overall selection. We had had some discussions with a couple teams, and you know, we had a good relationship with New York. I thought it was better to get it done early than to wait. Where we were from a position standpoint, being able to move back to the sixth position we thought was pretty unique. So with the draft over now, the Colts absolutely killed it at the top of the draft. They traded back from three to six with the Jets. Also with that trade, they were still able to get a premium player and turn their 49th overall pick into even more draft capital by trading down with the Eagles. Almost all the free agents we signed last year, we had on the draft board. You're jacked when that happens, because now like we gotta go sign this guy. We thought he was good enough to draft. We just didn't get the opportunity to. Take George Odom, for example, who we signed after the draft last year and ended up you know, starting a game to us, was a really good special teams player for us. We think has a really bright future. That's an important part. I mean, one of the things we tell every player that enters the building, we don't care where you came from. If you come and compete and earn a job, you're gonna earn a job. I don't care if you're an undrafted free agent, if you're a claim like Kenny Moore, if you win the job, we're gonna play you. And to me, that's all a player can ask for. You know, the proof's in the pudding. Everybody says it, but we've lived it here. spent 364 days working for this one day of work and it all comes together. I mean, I think we all feel confident because we, I mean, we've put in the work. He's very developmental. Mental is the biggest concern. But you like him, right? As a kid? Yeah, I mean, he's a little... No, as a player? Yeah, as a player, I do. Yeah, you got some talent. Watch a ton of tape on him. You you just done it all. Who are the best nine for us? You know your board, you know how it's set. We've asked a million questions, we've answered most of them. And that's why that game looked different. That's why he didn't, he wasn't as aggressive, he was timid. Whether it's need, good player, didn't, it didn't matter to me. Just let's get the nine good players that are gonna help us win football games. when we get to the real nitty gritty about making sure we've dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's. He's not a deluxe athlete, he's more fast, straight ahead than anything. I, I just have a feeling like his body will eventually gonna break down, he's just not a really big man. This is really the final step, the final chapter for it in terms of our evaluation and getting together as a group. I mean, we've watched these players five, six times. That's all it is, just keep, go, we just keep going back through over and over and over. So you can have your final statement and stand on the table for your guy. Does the work, he's an engaging guy, he pushes himself. If you're opposed to drafting a player, everybody can have their comments. They said he makes a lot of dumb, dumb, undisciplined mistakes in the game, so he's out of control. He's a good looking kid. But he's the toughest player on the team. Hey, do you want this guy on our team? Tell us what he is and how does he upgrade us. I just love the toughness that he has. 
but I don't see him as the solution to anything, like, other than it's a, he can play, he'll play aggressive. Does he compete for a position on the team, or is he more of a developmental type? Everyone in the room is involved. When he's not a worker, it's hard to kind of figure out what drive, what, uh, how to push his buttons and get him to work. We like what we do. We like our process, and we like our ability to examine and, and go through in detail each and every player. If we draft this guy, is he going to make our roster? Is he going to upgrade? Is he going to challenge? And the only other character piece is Chris, is what you and I talked about in talking to his position coach. The position coach said, uh, I hope my son grows up to be exactly like this guy. He's exactly like Chris is really smart about this, right? He understands at the end of the day, it's the coaches, even though he's, he and his scouts are responsible for the bulk of the work, we have to coach the players. And I think this guy's got some toughness to him, which I really like. Uh, he's, a, he's different than most track guys that, I, that, we, that we know where he's got toughness. Your percentages of success go up when everybody's on the same page. If you do take them, it's, it's, it'll be a good thing. You know, we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to work with them in terms of the technique. When the coach likes a player, you're going to get more out of them. We're driven for the player. The coach is driven for the player to be successful. I really, really like him a lot. He checks a lot of boxes of how we would use them. Kind of confirm the things that we're already hearing from all the scouts. Um, that they got that football character. Uh, I do think he's more competitive than most guys you see at that position. He's kind of got the mentality that you want. They can think and process quickly, that they fit the culture. I mean, if he really doesn't like to practice, then in my mind, that's a deal breaker. We both kind of get to see where we see the player, how we see him fitting in. In my opinion, more times than not, they lose because they, get, they lose out of the break. You know, what are we willing to sacrifice? It becomes very organic and very dynamic. So it's always an interesting debate and discussion. <laughs> if you just said, who are you taking? I'm taking that guy. So I don't care about the rest of the league. We gotta get nine players for us. We're not any smarter than anyone else. I just feel like we're gonna outwork people. It's no different than game day for us because your heart gets pumping, you're excited with the anticipation of what's gonna happen. We just walk in there confident. Not arrogant, but confident. If you're prepared, if you've done the work, you're gonna you're gonna feel confident. You're gonna feel fine. You gotta cover every single scenario, every situation. Like you always hear that situational football thing. So same thing with this. At the end of the day, it's about making sure that we've aligned them the way we want them, the way we see them. You're like, okay, here it is, and you start. Yep, that guy. Okay, he's gone. You know, maybe we take a body blow. We're not panicking. It peels off, and usually it comes down to either a one or two guys. Okay, he's gone, we're gonna go here. It's just not, there's no panic. We know there's gonna be players we like going in front of us. We, we get that. Don't worry about the guys we miss or we don't get on our team. Worry about the guys we get on our team. That's, that's a big theme for us. Every guy on there, when we draft him, we should feel excited. Do you like him the more you watch him because he's gonna play hard for four quarters? That's the talented one, isn't it? We want to be jacked up and like ready to go throw a party when we take a guy. Whether it's in the first round. Even in sixth, seventh round, it doesn't matter. Every guy we should be fired up about. When we put them up on that board, after all these months of work, if they're in a round and we like them, anybody we take in that round, we're going to be excited about. We should pick him. All right, good. I can already hear the screaming on draft day. Now you're running off pure adrenaline to get to this point. All right, Chris, good luck, my brother. I mean, that's our Super Bowl. I mean, that's our day, and it all comes together, you know, in that moment. Every pick's fine, whether it's in the first round or in the seventh round. Every pick is exciting. Yeah! Colts are on the clock. It wasn't a nervousness. It was just a pure game day, excitement, butterflies. You're just ready to go. I mean, you're, everybody's excited. They're tired of waiting around. We were prepared and, and ready for anything that happened. Hello. Yeah. Hey, 
guys interested in coming up? I got you a quarterback, we don't. Dorsey, John, so John's, yeah, I mean, look, John's, John's like a brother. Every year during draft day, uh, when we get on the pick, I usually get this call from Dorsey. Um, and I always know if it's on the pick that it's usually <laughs> he's joking and trying, to, and trying to get me riled up, you know, during the middle of uh, trying to make a decision. Everybody good with that? Two next year? Nine minutes. All right. So it would be... So if we get there, if we get 46, we'd have 34, 46, and then we get a two next year. Everybody doing the two twos? Yes, yes. I am. Um, tell them we'll do it. We'll do the second, and we'll do the uh, 20, 20. two and 20. 20. Bruce. Hey, Eric. It's Colt. We'll, uh, we'll do the two and the two next year. Bruce, we'll be 46 in the 2022. All right. All right. Call in, stay on the phone. Sure he's call in. Seven minutes. Call in the Kenny, it's Mike. All right. Colts trading with the Redskins. Yeah. 26 back to 26. <laughs> and next year's second round, Washington Center. Okay. Okay. So this year we have three chips. All right, go home. See y'all tomorrow. <laughs> Second round is usually like a great area to be. You can move up, you can move back, you can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, we we talked about moving back again once we got into the second round. Does Rock make it to us? Rock Yassin is a uh, outstanding character individual who exudes confidence and everything that we want in a, a Colts horseshoe type of player. Let's start with Rock. He's a hard corner, he's physical, he's got size, he's got length. Rock has all the traits and qualities that you want in a football player. I just love the fact that he plays with confidence. He's great with his hands. He loves to lift. He loves to run. He loves to be coached. And he fights every rep. He's an outstanding leader, tough people, all the things you want in a football player. We think he changes the culture and helps the room. So we all like it. <clears throat> Give everybody your thoughts on Rod. He's a DNA guy. He'll tackle. He plays hard. And he's tough. 
tell them to write the name down. Rocky Singh, Dr. Lane, Good. Yes. 715 Silver Rock Temple Corner. Write it down. Don't do anything wrong. All right, let's get him on the phone. Get him on the phone. You got character. He's one of your. He's one of your underlying <clears throat> guys. That's what we stand for. Get him on the phone. Yeah, we still got two more. Two. We're, we're in good shape. Rock. How you doing, brother? This is Chris Ballard with the Colts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you ready to you ready to come to Indy? All right, brother. We're gonna turn the card in. We're gonna pick you. <clears throat> All right, brother. Look, we expect you to bring everything you did at Temple, man. Excited to get you. Hey, this is Coach Reich. How you doing? Hey, congratulations, Four man. Minutes. Big, big day for you and your family. Get on, get on. Congrat yeah, you know, hey, I can't tell you how excited we are, right? I mean, you fit everything we do, right? All right. The, the talent, the character, the leadership. <laughs> just bring that all right here to end. Hey, Rock. How are you, man? Jim Mercy here, I, I, are you kidding me? Are you ready to come in and win a Lombardi? <laughs> All right, well that's why we're bringing you in. God bless you, congratulations to you and your family. You've earned this day. Enjoy 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 this name on the card? Yeah. Yeah. You kind of target guys and, and then, you know, you're, you're being a realist about it. You're like, are all of them going to be there when we pick? I mean, because some of this stuff is out of our control. Let's get back to Bonnie Beard. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. That's what I love about him the most. Hustle. Turn it in. With the 49th pick of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Ben Vanagoo, linebacker, TCU. There we go. <clears throat> ben. Hey, this is Chris Ballard with the Colts. Congrats, brother. We're about to take you right here and get you to Indy. You excited? <laughs> Needless to say, huh? With Ben, because of the rush upside, his ability to, to impact third down, we went ahead and took him first. We're gonna apply him in a couple different spots. Sam, defensive end, we're gonna do a lot of things with Ben. Um, and I think Flus and them are gonna have a good plan put together of how to use him. Adding speed on and athleticism to our defense was, was important. Pick us in. We're on the clock. Campbell. It's like the guy has rocket fuel. The guy is a rocket ship, super fast, um, really good with the ball in his hands. I'm a sucker for a receiver that has run after like that, and then when you add the speed. You can feel the speed. I really like the guy. And there's a couple routes on tape too. You know you can physically do it, you just kind of have to be taught and pushed and learn how to do it. But you really like players. I, mean, I watch the kid in person, he's explosive as hell. Former running back, right? Yeah, yeah. Former running back, and he's got speed. <clears throat> High character, explosive, great kid. All right, right, Parrish Cameron. Okay, 119. <laughs> 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 That's so good about that. <laughs> We liked Parrish all the way through the process, um, and Frank, Frank loved him. I like this guy. He's a threat to score every time he touches the ball. So and the only other character piece is Chris, is what you and I talked about in talking to his position coach. The position coach said, uh, I hope my son grows up to be exactly like this guy. He's exactly the kid. Parrish. <coughs> How you doing, brother? Chris Ballard with the Colts. You ready to come to Indy? That a boy. Congrats, man. Happy to get you. Really happy to get you. You're going to do great things for us. Hey, congratulations to you. 
Hey, man, we are fired up to get you, man. What a Nick, tribute no to you idea. and your it family, man. Amazing. I mean, just <laughs> incredible. I mean, going where you're going in this draft, and it, it, it's That's just great. a tribute to all your hard work. And, and you know you're coming in here with the dynamic offense, and, and 12's ready to get you the football, man. The debate probably ought to be Bandigrew versus uh, Oakley. We wanted to continue to add long, fast, athletic players on defense, and we both of them fit our bill. <laughs> then being able to get to 89 and still have uh, Okariki on the board, who we liked. Colts are on the clock. Bobby, how you doing, brother? Chris Ballard with the Colts. I'm good, man. You, you ready to come to Indy? Yes. Awesome, man. Awesome. We're excited to get you, man. We've been kind of sitting here waiting and hoping you'd fall to us, man. It'd be a great fit for our defense. Oh, my. And we are so fired up for you to get in here and just play some great defensive football for us. Get ready to go to work. We got four guys who can really come in and, and help our team. Good stinking job! Yeah. Everybody's just jacked when they're getting players they we had kind of all along. Welcome from uh, West McAfee. Virginia University, oh, 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 2014 out. Colts Man of the Year and two-time Pro Bowler. We have a seven-second delay. He's man of America. The Indianapolis Colts are the hottest team, not only in the AFC South, but the entire. <laughs> <laughs> I know what the draft experts say and value, and I don't really care what the outside world thinks, if they fit us or not. Kick us in. Colts are on the clock. Corey. All right, thanks. How you doing? It's Chris Ballard with the Colts. Thanks, buddy. Good, man. You, uh, we're about to pick you right here. Um, welcome to Indy. Hey, congratulations, man. Honestly, uh, like, like. Like Chris said, we're just trading up here to get you. We had our eye on you and Turn it in. love your film, love everything yeah, that you're going to bring. So I hope you're ready to wear that horseshoe and, and make it proud. Awesome. Yeah. Do they fit our program? Do they fit our skill set that we want on offense or defense? Do they fit the character profile that we have? And if they do, we're going to take them. How you doing, brother? Hey, congrats, man. We're going to take you right here. Absolutely, man. Yeah, let's go to work, man. Welcome to Indy. We are excited and uh, can't wait for you to put the horseshoe on and uh, and wear it proud. And we are really looking forward for you coming in here and, and to play some right. kick-ass defense. Pick us in. Colts are on the clock. EJ, you ready to come to Indy? I'm a green guy. That shirt is sweet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the button. Those are sweet. Where did you get them? You look good. I just think it's hard to find get off the character. You got get off, you get off the rock, you got character. 
get Green on the phone and take him. It was going to take him a little while ago. Guys, there's that boy Jamie, Gary Green. Gary Green's like, he's like the guy at Mississippi State. They just, they can't say enough good things about. Mr. Green, how you doing? Chris Ballard with the Colts. You ready to come to Indy? We're gonna, we're gonna pick you right here, man. Outstanding, hey man, you, you deserve this. You get a chance to come in and compete. You know, as we go through the draft, we're still identifying from from speed to green, guys with traits that we like, athletic traits that we think with a chance to ascend. The fact that we're able to get people in rounds four and five that we think can compete and really contribute to the team, and then you get two offensive linemen and late, I mean, that that's incredible to do that. The final selection and latest Mr. Relevant 2019 with the 254th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. We're still working. This is the hardest part. Day three is always fun because at the end of it, you know, the whole free agency thing, you know how that's going to go. It's almost like the stock market. It's crazy because now you're recruiting against 31 other teams for a select amount of players that are, that are still left on your draft board and usually they're on everybody else's draft board too, so now you're competing for them. It's kind of chaotic, but it takes everybody or it ain't gonna work. All right, so Harry guys, take a look at your guys up here. Just start recruiting the shit out of them. Make sure you check with Shaw on the numbers. This is uh, Coach Wright for the Colts. How you doing? Good. Hi, hey, I'm doing great. Look, just communicate. Let everybody know where it's at. Fill out the sheet completely. Are we done at tackle? Make sure we got the paperwork. The paperwork, guys. Woo! I can't thank you guys enough. That, that process at the end right there, that was unreal. I wish our mini camp was tomorrow. I want to see these guys. I'm tired of waiting. Now we waited for months. Now we finally drafted them. Now we have to wait another week to see them. So that's that's the part that sucks a little bit. But no, we, I mean we're all excited. We're fired up. Like every GM in the league right now, we all feel good. Um, I also stay sober during this time because I know they got to prove it. I know they still got to play. And not only the player, um, but then we have to do our job internally. You know, we, we got to do everything we can to help develop the player um, and help him assimilate into being an NFL player. And that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a process. I sent all our rookies a text about, look, you're going to have some tough times. You're going to have some dark days here over the next four months. But you just, every day, just, just keep working, keep getting better. And I probably, it, eventually, it, it'll all come together for you. And it's our job to help them. It's our job to help them and push them and make them better. That's why when, when we talk about the locker room, how important it is, the locker room's got to help them also. The locker room's got to show them the standards that, that, and what we stand for. And then they got to come get it. And those who do will we'll make the football team and make us better.